Hey guys, it's me, Mr. T50, and welcome back to Umineko. We last left Jessica here freaking out about something. What what were you freaking out about, Jessica? <laughs> Separate rooms? Uh, uh, Since Jessica's cheeks had been stuffed with chocolate coated Chinsuko. Okay, let's look that up. I don't know what that is. Chinsuko is a traditional sweet often sold as a souvenir. Uh, in Japan, it's a small biscuit made mostly of lard and flour. This mild and sweet flavor, very similar to shortbread. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, that Shannon had brought as a present from Okinawa. It all flew out at Shannon when Jessica cried out. So wait. Am I to assume, and they might tell us, obviously, but did what just, did what just, uh, that, that thing we saw at the beginning with them going on a date, did that happen between what we last saw and this? I think that's what's happening. Yeah, I think it did. I like fish and stuff. いや、だからさ。健全な男女がお泊まりありで旅行に行ったわけだろ。それでチューも投げれば、ぎゅーもないのかよ。ちょ、ちゅうについてはノーコメントです。あ、でも、ぎゅーはありましたよ。a lot of things had happened to Shannon, and it seemed to have been a very happy trip. But it looked like Jessica found it pretty irritating. For a while, Jessica chewed on her present, complaining about romance and pretending to feign an agony on her bed. Oh, hold on. Alright, sorry about that. I had to go uh, do something real quick. Let's continue. And I had to restart the game, by the way, so that's why there's no text here. But let's continue. Shannon and George had chosen to go to Okinawa because there was a huge aquarium there. And they had used the aquarium as an excuse to get together. Since their relationship had started at an aquarium, having their first overnight trip also to be at an aquarium must be must have held some commemorative value. <笑>それはその、お互い独身の男女ですし、ジョージさんがそこをしっかりするのが男女のマナーだとおっしゃって。だから、それを踏み越えるための男に旅行じゃねえのかよ。もはや9とか9とかのレベルじゃねえぜ。お、お嬢様がどういう意味でおっしゃってるのかわかりませんが。No idea, none whatsoever. ジョ、ジョージ様は最後まで本当に真摯でいてくださいました。それはその私もそういうこともあるかなというか、でも私たちお付き合いはしてますけどその Shannon's face got bright red. She made a circle with both hands, restlessly intertwining, separating and making heart marks with them. Apparently, the dramatic progress Jessica had looked forward to hadn't happened. But it seemed that it had been a very important experience for Shannon in her own way. 
So in the end, whether Jessica was jealous of Shannon or cheered for her, it didn't change the fact that Shannon had a huge lead on her. Now I didn't think about this till just now. I'm actually glad I had a little bit to think about it. But if this is the case for like all of this to happen, does this still mean that it's the same like it's the same timeline as the first chapter? Like, did they do all this beforehand, or is it impossible due to something that I may have missed? I think it's still possible, but it's seeming less likely that it's the same world just maybe earlier. So, in the end, whether Jessica was jealous of Shannon or cheered for her, it didn't change the fact that Shannon had a huge lead on her. Was she trying to somehow say that Jessica was never going to get a boyfriend? あの、お嬢様は素敵な方ですから、私なんかより <laughs> And look what you did. Now you started your coughing fit. Jessica threw several cushions at her. But midway, she had an asthma attack and started to choke pretty badly. Shannon hurriedly ran over to a nearby side table and started searching around on top of it. A lovely basket was placed there and inside of it was Jessica's broncholiter. Bron Broncodilator? Is that how you say it? Shannon picked it up and handed it over to Jessica. Jessica's asthma attacks always came very suddenly. Because of this, she always carried this medicine around. She breathed in the medicine and, after a while, managed to overcome her choking as her asthma finally settled down. Shannon thought this was a good chance to leave and tried to exit the room after bowing courteously. As she did. One more small cushion came flying and hit Shannon on the head. She noticed that Jessica was on the verge of crying, half of her face buried in her last and favorite cushion. Oh, come on, why does everybody want me to do stuff so much? Oh, okay, be back in a bit again. Alright, that may have taken a little bit longer than I planned on. Unfortunately, today is uh, tomorrow. Or, tomorrow is today? Either way, it's the next day, and uh, let's keep going. She noticed that Jessica was on the verge of crying, half of her face buried in her favorite, in her last and favorite cushion. That face was red and meek. お嬢様。お嬢様。とても これからもっともっと before she realized it, Jessica was shedding huge tears. Jessica really didn't feel like crying, and of course, she felt like supporting Shannon's progress and love as a friend. However, as she had cheered Shannon on, her true feelings had suddenly gotten mixed in, and she couldn't help but shed tears. 
Shannon understood Jessica's innocent and easily injured heart. Jessica's ordinary rough style of speech it was all just an attempt to protect her own easily injured heart. As a daughter and successor to the Ushermia family, and as a girl isolated on Rokinjima, the only person she could expose her true feelings to was Shannon. Shannon understood that. So, she strongly regretted getting into even a slightly good mood. お嬢様は素敵な方です。そんなお嬢様に素敵な男性が現れないわけがありません。死者の、もう時間だろ。早く行かないと、また現地さんや母さんに怒られるぜ。私は全然平気だから、早く行きなよ。Jessica faced away, acting as though she really didn't want to trouble Shannon, waving her hand as though driving Shannon away. Shannon took that as a sign that anything more would be obnoxious, bowed her head and left the room. When her footsteps disappeared into the distance, Jessica laid down on her bed, still hugging a cushion. Her expression was a little meek, with tears in her eyes. But for the first time in a long time, she had a very, very quiet and honest conversation with her heart. Can't believe Shannon beat you. Seriously, what the heck? As Shannon watered the flower beds in the garden in high spirits, she sensed someone's presence. She turned around, thinking that if this was one of the family coming to see her, she must greet them. And what she saw was that witch. Be I just realized that the mirror scene probably had to have happened before the dating scene. That would make more sense. Uh, anyway, as Beatrice sat on the rose arch, she happily blew on her pipe. Sitting in a place like that would get you pricked by the roses. And it might have been dangerous if you fell off the arch, but after all, this was a witch. That would surely be worrying too much. おかげさまでその順調です。当然よ。わらわの魔法は敵面である。そなたには丸で二人が出会うのはあらかじめ決められた運命であったかのように感じているかもしれん。だがそれは間違いよ。夢夢運命だなどと思うでないぞ。The witch was calling attention to something. Two things, actually. Originally, her relationship with George had been completely impossible. And the power of magic was so great that it could distort that. Shannon had just gotten wrapped up in those sweet days, and had started believing the illusion that all fate revolved around her. But she remembered the witch's words. Originally, her relationship with George had been impossible. No, it might also be impossible in the future as well. <laughs> Definitely. Beatrice's 
決して忘れたことはありません<笑>すまぬすまぬいじめに来たわけではないのにな口が悪いのはわらわが性分許されよそれより聞いたぞ聞いたぞ二人きりで旅行に行ったとなさぞや楽しかったであろうはいとてもその楽しかったです Shannon's face suddenly grew bright. The witch laughed lightly, as though that transformation was worth money. Hmm. Moha ya sonata no omoi bito wa, ippo teki ni omou dake no sonzai dewa nai. Tagai ni omoi omoareru koi bito doushi yo. Ai ni mita sareta futari ni totte, sekai wa tada sore dake de seiritsu suru. Subarashiki li sou no sekai kana. <laughs> Beatrice laughed pleasantly. That smile made her look as though she blessed the lover's rendezvous from the bottom of her heart, without a trace of malice. After that day, Beatrice had shown herself before Shannon every once in a while. Even now, Shannon still thought of her as a creepy being. However, She was also indebted to this person for bestowing the magic that had given her the relationship she had with George. So, Shannon tried with all her might not to be surprised or scared. So, so that the. I know, Beatrice, I'm a. Lyoko no miyane ni okashi o katte kita n desu. Yakata ra so no. Beatrice, I'm a mo ikaga de shou ka. Ho? It seemed that even a witch who had boasted of living for 1,000 years hadn't been able to predict that she would receive a souvenir from a pair of sweet lovers. When she saw that ex surprised expression, Shannon thought of the witch as a friend for the first time. Ho <laughs> ho! Thanks, you made my Wikipedia search absolutely useless. This witch, who surely held a terrifying power, Was chomping down on sweets one after another, making a <laughs> making a sound like a squirrel stuffing walnuts into its mouth. After a while, Shannon couldn't conceal her laughter. Hmm. <laughs> The witch was in a great mood, fully enjoying modern candy. The thing that Shannon had set softly on the table was a gold colored butterfly brooch. ふたりの中はこれからも永劫に盤石であろうが出会いのきっかけは確かに魔法の力で与えてもらったかもしれませんでもその出会いを永遠のものにする努力は二人で協力し合って続けていくものだと思いますうん愛もバラと同じか過
<笑>木を害してなどおらぬそのブローチはすでにそなたのものわらわとの友情の証にせいぜい大事にしてくれれば少しは持ち続けそのご利益を得るもよし宝石箱にしまい込むもよし望むなら恋路に悩む別の者のに譲ろうとそなたの勝手だただ大事にしてくれればよいさすがに粗末にされては心が痛むでな According to Beatrice, she'd appeared several times in the past in response to a person's summons, so that she could give them a tool imbued with some kind of magical power. However, when most people used that power to resolve their worries, they quickly came to think of that power as creepy and, forgiving, forgetting their feelings of thanks, they threw the tools they had been given away with disgust. <laughs> the witch laughed heartily, but it looked like a sad laugh in Shannon's eyes. She herself had been like that in the past. No, maybe she was still like that now. Beatrice was definitely a witch. With a strange and terrifying power. Most likely, no one would go along with her if they could help it. Surely, even though they had relied on that strange power, people sometimes felt fear rather than gratitude as a result. It must have deeply hurt the witch when they repeated over and over. Since the time since the time she had started thinking that way, Shannon had tried to stop being frightened of Beatrice. That was surely what had tormented her for longer than 1,000 years. Maybe she really liked the sweets. Beatrice, who normally spoke abusively, praised the black tea that Shannon served her and looked to be in remarkably high spirits. After doing that for a while, the witch and the servant grew animated talking about the trip with George. Shannon didn't know much about Beatrice. First off, she was a ghost-like being who appeared in unexpected places at unexpected times. And it seemed that not everyone could perceive that she was there. It seemed that each person had something called a wavelength, and that the ability to perceive it varied greatly among different people. Only Shannon and Cannon could interact with her enough to exchange words like this. There were few people who could sense her presence, but most people couldn't even feel that much. From what Beatrice had said, Cross and his wife in particular had zero magical talent. And no matter how much she followed them around, they would never notice her. Huh. I know this isn't a great spot, but I actually do have something to do. I'm just trying to finish up the episode for today. Sorry, it was a bit choppy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll continue from here. I know it's not a great spot, but I think it'll work. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.